Hey everyone, Harris here with iDownloadBlog. So I've been using the 2018 MacBook Pro for several weeks now. And before I do my full long-term extensive review of this laptop, I'm going to do two videos, a quick series, uh, for reasons to or to not get this MacBook Pro. Uh, features I like, features I dislike about this. Starting out with the things that I do not like about this computer. And then we'll hop into the things that I do like in the next episode, which will be coming very shortly. So starting out number one, the thing that I dislike about this computer is the temperature, which I wouldn't mind that much if this wasn't called a laptop. This is something that is definitely meant to be on the go and to be able to use on your lap. And now I definitely can still do that, but it often gets uncomfortable and I would rather have a pillow on my lap and the laptop on the pillow than just having this on my legs. It does get pretty warm when using more intensive applications. I'm even sometimes just browsing though, it can still get pretty warm. And because this is an aluminum chassis, it really does show that heat and the temperature uh, and it begins to become uncomfortable at times. This isn't unique to this computer. I had it with my previous MacBook Pro, uh, but just this build and how thin and light um, and compact it is, it will run into some heat issues. So I'm totally on board with USB-C. It's faster, it allows for more applications, more periphery. Um, a single adapter can allow you to do basically whatever you want. However, there's still one feature port-wise about this that really drives me crazy, no SD card. Now I understand if they really could not fit it in space-wise, like they just couldn't do it. But if they could do it, I really wish that they would have because there's so many times that all I need to do is edit video with my SD card on the go, but I still have to bring my adapter with me even if I bring nothing else just because I need to be able to use the SD card. There are other pro laptops on the market that have exclusively USB-C as well as the headphone jack, but that also have an SD card slot. It's not a huge deal at the end of the day, but there are a lot of creative professionals, video and photo that use SD cards all the time and to not have to use an adapter all the time, every day in order to use SD card would have been super nice. Okay, next, the trackpad. The trackpad, in my opinion, is totally unnecessarily large. It's an awesome trackpad, it's smooth, you can click anywhere, it's force touch, which is pretty nice. I still do prefer the clickiness of the old trackpads, but it's okay. Uh, but the real issue is that it's just too big, and my palm often touches it and moves the cursor to the beginning of where I'm typing and then messes it up. This happens probably every other day. Um, and for a trackpad that doesn't add too much more value for at least me and my profession, uh, the trackpad that's being this big disrupts me more than it helps me. It hinders me more than it helps me. That's where this is more of a gimmick than a feature for me. Having a trackpad this big takes away from my usage. And this goes for the previous generation as well, uh, but I'm not a fan of the trackpad on here being so big. So the keyboard on here is gonna be on both my reasons to get this and not to get this. It is a good keyboard, however, one thing that I notice a lot from this generation and I guess from just the butterfly nature in general is that typos are a lot more prevalent. Because it takes less force to press the keys with this, you can hit the edge of a key and you'll create a typo uh, more so than you would if it were thicker keys that required a little bit more force to touch and to tap and to activate that key. So when you're typing and you just miss it a little bit, uh, it's more likely to be a typo than it would be on the previous Mac. But like I said, I'll also talk about why the keyboard is improved in the next video. There are other smaller issues such as the fact that the touch bar can definitely be a nuisance sometimes. Um, it doesn't always work perfectly and sometimes I'm just looking for that escape key and it takes two taps away, which is annoying. But that's not something that I'm going to rant about for this. Then the only other thing definitely isn't exclusive to this computer. Uh, it's more in Macs in general. The body size of this is still, well, kind of big for a 15 inch laptop. It's still slimmed down over the previous model that I was using, the 2013 Retina, but the XPS series and the Matebook and a lot of other devices out there have much smaller body size and chassis size than this computer with slimmer bezels, um, but retaining a similar thickness still, a still usable thickness. Um, I think that would really help out students if they could make the 15 inch in a smaller body, but that is why they have the 13 inch if that is what you're looking for. That is always, of course, the option. So because this list is so specific, that really shows the strengths of this device. Um, it does heat up, the touch bar can be finicky, the trackpad is a little bit too big, the keyboards lead to a lot of typos, and just a couple other small nitpicks about this device. It's a pretty impressive device though, um, and this list doesn't have anything that would totally drive me away, uh, as you can tell because I'm still using this. But if you're interested in the features I love about this computer, um, go ahead and click that video down below or the card to see why I really do recommend this computer as well. But that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching. Leave your feedback and comments down below and subscribe for more videos just like this.